Imagine uncovering the identity of your unknown biological parents, grandparents, or breaking through a brick wall. Your DNA matches are the puzzle pieces, and Ancestry DNA's latest tool, Enhanced Shared Matches, is the game changer that will help put the pieces together. If you've ever been frustrated by DNA matches who have no trees, private trees, or very small trees that you just can't figure out, get ready to have your mind blown. This revolutionary tool is taking the guesswork out of identifying your mystery relatives, making it easier than ever to build trees for these matches and unlock the secrets hidden within your DNA. With tens of thousands of DNA matches, it can feel overwhelming, but identifying your closest DNA matches and those from the right part of your family tree is crucial. Ancestry has always been at the forefront with the largest number of DNA test takers, the most trees, and great tools. Now, by using their enhanced shared matches, your search for unknown relatives just got a lot easier. Now, let's look at an example. We're going to start with Jay and Allison, who share 121 centimorgans of DNA and are expected to be about second to third cousins. Now, each time we're going to work through a four step process, we're going to look at the trees. We're gonna look at hints, then notes, then the highest matches. First, trees. Now, most of the people who are gonna show up here as people that we can't figure out how they're related to us is because of their trees. First of all, they might not have a tree, so no tree, or they might have a very small tree and it's just not showing any common ancestors or common surnames, or they could have a tree with a mistake in it, or they have a tree, but is unlinked, as in this case. So Allison has an unlinked public tree. And that means that she has taken a DNA test, she has made a tree, but she never linked her DNA to her tree. And that's very common. And so this one, I've already looked at the tree, and this is also very common. Her tree actually only has one person, and it's her, and it's marked private. So that's step one, but in this case, it wasn't very helpful, and that's often going to be the case. We're going to switch to the shared matches tab and notice that the enhanced shared matches are called shared matches pro and i'm using a tool called goldie may to privatize things so i can share this um, in the recording and that's why you everything goes blurry for a moment now let's look at this shared matches pro tab which is the enhanced shared matches and look at the difference between that and the original shared matches and one of the main things that you can easily see is instead of having two columns of data, we now have three. This first column is for shared matches. These are people who share DNA with both Jay and Allison, and so all three people are likely related because of a common ancestor. In this case, the first match is Jim, who we can tell is actually Jay because it says self or twin, and you wouldn't know if it was a self or twin except for I know who Jim is. This is the list of shared matches, the people who share DNA with both Jay and Allison. Then the second column has always been how these matches, these shared matches, how much DNA they share with Jay. And so again, here we can see that this person is Jay's self or twin, and it's Jim, it's the self. And down here we can see that Denise is his daughter. And that's what we've always been able to see. But the game changer, what is really amazing is we now have this third column. And this shows how Allison is related to these matches. And so we can see that Allison is um, basically the same 121 centimorgans to Jim and that she's 111 to Denise, which is Jim's daughter. And this is the tool that will be so important. So let's go back to our process. We have already looked at the tree, and now we're gonna look at those people who have common ancestor hints, or these hints. And we can do that by going into this filter, shared matches. And over here, I'm gonna say, I wanna see those where there's a common ancestor hint. And that's where Ancestry thinks they figured out how Jim or Jay and Allison are likely related. Now, these matches, these shared matches, are placed in order based on how much DNA they share with Jay, and it's in descending order. And so Donald shares the most with him, and then JRS, these are two brothers, and then Robert, a nephew, and it continues to go down. Now let's look at some matches that have common ancestor hints that aren't so close. Okay, I've scrolled down a bit to some matches that share less DNA, but they're still good matches. 
And here we have Tanya, Sydney, Barbara, and Janelle. And each of these have this little symbol, and that means it has a common ancestor hint. And that means they think they know how Tanya is related to Jim. And when I've put these notes here, that is how I show that I've already done the work. I've confirmed the hint. I've looked at traditional genealogical records, and I've added Tanya to my tree. And I show that the common ancestor between Jim and Tanya, or Jay and Tanya, are Charles Peters and Frederica Werther through their son, William, and that Tanya is his second cousin twice removed. Or here again, Sydney is also through Charles Peters and Frederica Werther so th through their son, Hank, and second cousins once removed. And you can see I've got a hint down here for Janelle. I've not looked at it yet. I've not added Janelle to my tree. And so I could work this hint. I could click on it. I can look at the building out of how Ancestry thinks we're related and then add Janelle to my tree if everything works out. So that's step one, because what we're trying to figure out is what part of the tree should Allison and Jim be related on? And it's pretty obvious that it looks like she should be like a Peters or a Werther's part of the tree. Okay, so we've looked at people who have hints. Now let's look at people who have notes because I've added them to my tree. And so I've cleared all the filters and let's this time search by those who have notes. And again, you'll see how I use my notes. Let's apply this and let's scroll down to some more distant matches. And I've went to the top of page two and there's just two matches, but I wanted to show you again, we have these matches going in descending order from how they're how much DNA they share with Jay. We have 44 and 22. And then here we have Charles Peters and Frederica Werther that we've been seeing. But we also have a match to Gunther Werther and Molly Reinhardt, and those are Frederica's parents. And these notes are gonna do very similar to what these common ancestor hints do. They're gonna give us an idea of how Jay and Allison are related, what part of the tree. And now let's go to step four. Step four is the one that sometimes we hit gold with. We're gonna look for the highest matches between Jay and Allison, looking at how much DNA they share with Allison. So let's take a look. Now again, you never know where you're gonna find these matches. So I just kind of keep scrolling through the pages. And this is the top of page two and I'm scrolling down and I hit pay dirt. Here is a sister of Allison and this is Barbara and it has this common ancestor hint, but I've also got this note. That means I've already got her on my tree, and now I know exactly how Allison and Jay are related. And it makes sense. It goes back to Charles Peter and Gunther and Werther. And so this case is basically solved. Now I wanna show you two other matches that I found while I was looking through these shared matches. Okay, these were actually on the first page. We have Francis and Helen. They share 581 and 577 with Allison. 276 and 273 with J or Jim. Now seeing numbers that are that closely related gives me a good clue that Francis and Helen are of the same generation and that they're pretty closely related. And in fact, I had Helen on my tree in a possible position based on her last name. And I had an idea of who Francis might be. But now that I've seen these, let's go ahead and look at Helen and find Francis to see how they are related. And now we're at the one-to-one -one page of Jay and Helen, and we're going to look down this shared match column and look for Frances. And now I've scrolled down and I found Frances, and look at her relationship to Helen. They share 2,451 centimorgans, and they're listed as sisters. And when you have that much DNA, we can be pretty certain that's the relationship. Now I know we're both Frances and Helen, how they're related to Jim and how they fit into this family tree. Now let's look at another example. So here's our second example. We're using Jay again, this time Jay and Alicia. And again, the first thing we do is look at their trees. Here we have another unlinked public tree. And when I look at it, this time there are two people, but they're both private, and so that's not helpful. So we're gonna move to the second step where we're gonna look at the common ancestor hints under this shared matches pro tab. And so when we get here, we're gonna filter these matches and we're gonna look for those with this common ancestor hint. and apply, and we're gonna see which part of the tree Alicia is likely related to Jay or Jim through. Now I've scrolled down to some of the matches and we have Tanya, S, Marilyn, and Barbara. And we see that Tanya is a descendant of Charles, Peter, and Frederica Werther, like our last example, but S is a descendant of Gunther Werther and Molly Reinhardt. And this couple are the parents of Frederica Werther. 
Here I have another way that I create my own notes. And this is when I add a question mark, that means there's some type of hint. This time we have one of these common ancestor hints, but I haven't actually done the work. I haven't done traditional genealogy and I haven't proven this relationship and I do not have Marilyn on my tree yet. And then we have another person, Barbara, who is also from Charles Peters and Guthrie Werther. And so we know our match is likely from this part of our tree. And we can stop here and now start looking for that high match. Or we can also look at those people that I've got notes besides these to see who I've placed on the tree already. Let's clear this. And I'm going to filter those just that have the notes and hit apply. And in this case, as I scroll down, I see that almost everybody that I have notes for are people that had one of these common ancestor hints. And that makes sense because once I've added them to my tree, even if there wasn't already a common ancestor hint, there will likely be one now if they have linked their DNA to their trees. I do have John here that is a first cousin twice removed or so to Jay, and I have added him to my tree even though there's not a common ancestor hint. But again, this is just verifying that we're looking in the right part of the tree either Peter's Werther, or if it's further back, it's going to be this werther Reinhardt kind of connection. And let's go to the last step, which is really the most fun, and look at Alicia's matches and see if she has any high matches that can help us. And in this case, we had four pages of shared matches, again, people who match both Jay and Alicia. And on page two, we have another wonderful hit. We have somebody R, who is sharing 1,641 Cinnamorgans with Alicia and is said to be her aunt or grandmother. Now let's actually take a look at this common ancestor hint to see a bit more about what it's telling us. Now to privatize these matches, I clicked on that link and then I went on through to this common ancestor hint. On the left, we will see descendants going from Jay's great-great-grandfather to his great-grandmother, maternal grandfather, and down to him. And on the right, we'll see the same for R. And we can see that when we have these white blocks, these are people I already have on my tree, and it ends with this Ida Pearl Werther. Now her child here, I have this dashed line, it's not white, and it says evaluate. And so now what I need to do is work on Ida and her descendants and make sure I can prove this is actually her child or prove it's not, and then finish that connection. And then we'll be able to add both R and Alicia to our tree. And for our final example, we're going to look at Kenny and Kathleen. They share 128 Cinnamorgans and are predicted to be second to third cousins. Again, the first step is pretty easy. We're just going to look at the tree. Again, it's another unlinked public tree. This time there are two people. They're both marked private. It's not very helpful. And so now let's look at the shared matches. Those people who share DNA with both Kenny and Kathleen and are all likely related because they have common ancestors. When I look at some of these matches, S, R, E, and Steve, you can see that they're going back to this couple, Anton Carbach and Mary Ann Reuter. And this one I actually have placed in my tree. These other three, I've got question marks. So the common ancestor hint is saying these are the common ancestors between Kenny and Kathleen, but I haven't actually done the genealogical research. This is a strong evidence that this is how Kenny and Kathleen are likely related. And you might have already noticed that I've already found the key person that I need to find. And this is R, and they share 2,644 Cinnamorgans of DNA with Kathleen, and it's listed as a sister. And I haven't placed R on the tree, but I have a common ancestor hint. So Kathleen doesn't have a tree, but it looks like R probably had a tree. And now I can place both R and Kathleen on the tree after I do my due diligence and prove this relationship and prove every generation. Now, when I went to that common ancestor hint, again, on the left, we will have Kenny's relationship back to Anton. On the right, we would have Kathleen's. I saw that I'd actually already done the work, and that's because two of Kenny's siblings have also tested, and I must have done the work with them and just not updated it here. And so now I can put R on this tree, but I can also put Kathleen. I want to show you a final tip about using these enhanced shared matches, and that's this plus sign, which is great. This can save a lot of time. Right here, you can click on add, and you can add or edit the relationship. It will actually walk you through asking if you know how R is actually related to Kinney. You can add or edit to groups, which are these 
They used to be the colored um, circles and now they're colored squares with the first letter of a group. And this is the Carbach Rooter group that I've created. And you can also quickly add notes, which is really helpful. In the past, you had to really go to the other page, but now you can either add a note if there isn't one, or you can just click here and add a note that way. So Ancestor DNA's enhanced shared matches are a great tool to help you identify more of your DNA matches build your family tree out, and potentially break through your brick walls. Now, if you have questions about enhanced shared matches, ancestry DNA, or other DNA-related questions, please leave a comment below. I'm going to be producing more videos about DNA. Please like and follow my channel. I'll see you next time.